Welcome back to LPN Online, Crime Fighters. We're reporting today from a foxhole on the front lines of the war on crime. I'm Ray Larson. And I'm Caroline Dunn. And this week, we've had a lot going on here at the Commonwealth's Attorney's Office in two cases involving vulnerable victims. The first case we want to talk about occurred in July of 2010 when the Lexington police received a complaint from the Adult Protective Services from the Cabinet for Families and Children. It seems that the victim, who was a woman who was uh, diagnosed with a variety of mental deficiencies, uh, had reported that her caregiver, the person who was being paid to look after her, had forced her, signed her up, to work at a local strip club. Our roving reporter, Blorina Goyani, is on the scene at that strip club and reports. Blorina, to you. Thanks, Caroline. Today I'm here in front of Divas Club. With me is Detective Chris Russell, Prosecuting Attorney Dan Laren, and Director of Victim Services, Mary Houlihan. Can you tell us what happened in this case? Yes, ma'am. I uh, received a referral from the State Adult Protective Services, and it advised that one of our residents of a support for community living home that had been diagnosed with a mental deficiency had uh, reported to the staff that she had been brought to this club by another staff member and uh, basically signed up to strip at this club, and that uh, she had worked here for a week made uh, between $80 and $100 a night, and that the staff member who was being paid by the Commonwealth to care for her had actually taken half of the money she had earned every day and uh, had almost forced her to work here. Um, what about you, Dan? Well, the records that the detective obtained from this establishment were critical to our case because they showed that the defendant was the person who brought this mentally retarded young lady here, got her a job uh, as a stripper, and uh, you know, needless to say, when she's supposed to be providing care and service for this young lady and she was out here instead making her work as a stripper, that's against the law and we took action accordingly. And Mary, you uh, work with the victim in this case. I did. Um, well, we all worked with the victim in this case. It was a particularly sad case in a, lot of, in a lot of ways, but one in particular is during the court processing of a case, we like the victim to speak out to the judge or the court regarding what they went through. And in this case, after everything she went through, the victim didn't feel that she was able to speak to the judge about what she had experienced. She was too scared and didn't understand the process well enough to feel comfortable to let the, let the judge know how she felt. But she did speak at great length to Dan and Chris and I and, um, you know, made it clear that she was really just trying to ask to learn how to dance, not to be signed on as a stripper at a strip club. And that she was scared, didn't know what to do, and thankfully these guys were able to step in and help because the defendant pled guilty to five years and the judge was so outraged by her behavior and choices he sent her to serve on Friday of last week. Thanks, Florina. And that wasn't the only case involving a vulnerable victim. Tell us a little bit about that case, Ray. Well, the next guy is Jason Dudley. Seems like in March of 2011. Uh, this guy, Jason Dudley, pled guilty to knowingly exploiting an adult. Uh, asked Blarina to follow up on this case, and she is with the prosecutor, Dan Laren, now. Blarina, what's going on out there? Thanks, Caroline. I'm here at Fayette Circuit Court. Dan, what's the upcoming news for this case? Well, Mr. Dudley pled guilty to uh, what we call abuse of an adult. Uh, basically, he took advantage of, a, of an elderly man who suffers from Lou Gehrig's disease and stole about $16,000 from him. He pled guilty to this offense last Thursday. Uh, he asked for a day to get his affairs in order and to report to the jail on Friday, and come Friday, he did not go to the jail. So an, uh, an arrest warrant was issued for him. That warrant remains active. I checked it about 20 minutes ago. And what it boils down to is he's a fugitive from justice. He was given the opportunity to, to take a day to get things together, and he used that opportunity to fail to appear, and he is at large. We don't know where he is. Thanks, Blarina. She does a great job out she there. She really does. 
Well, at any rate, Jason Dudley, when he was sentenced by the judge in Fayette Circuit Court, the judge was being a nice guy and gave him a day to get what he says, get your affairs in order before you turn yourself in at the Fayette County Detention Center to begin to start serving your sentence. Well, guess what? Jason Dudley beat feet. He is long gone. So that caused us to make a decision. And we have decided that we're going to start with Jason Dudley to, to name him as Lexington's most, most wanted. wanted. And here's a picture of Mr. Jason Dudley. Um, he is a white male, 240 pounds, 6 foot 1 inch, and brown shaggy hair. So be on the lookout, folks, because we want this guy where he belongs. Brown shaggy hair. How would you like to? How would you like to have somebody say Caroline Dunn? She has uh, mostly blonde, <laughs> shaggy hair. How's that hit you? Well, it's not shaggy, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we'll see you next week on Lexington Prosecutor News Online. Until then. We're here in the foxhole on the front lines of the war on crime, looking out for you. Okay.